Hello everybody, I'm Ding. I'm a verified crypto artist on Rarible, which is a platform where you can trade non-fungible tokens for Ethereum. But if none of this makes sense to you and you'd like to understand, then keep watching. I just want to say thank you for clicking this video and if it helps you in any way then I'd appreciate it if you could help me by leaving a like or subscribe. Before we begin I'd like to put in a little disclaimer that I am still also very new to crypto art so if you are planning to get into it do not take this as your one stop of knowledge and definitely do your own research outside of this. With that being said let's get started. What even is an NFT? It is a digital token that can be bought and sold for cryptocurrency. These tokens started out as trading cards, virtual pets, and even rare memes. Yes, memes. But because of the coronavirus pandemic, people were restricted from going to see art in person at galleries or museums or whatever, and thus came about the crypto art boom. People can now buy and sell digital art through platforms like Rarible, OpenSea, or SuperRare. Now, you're probably wondering, what is the value in buying digital art? Couldn't anyone just take a screenshot? Yes, you're absolutely right. But just as you can go to a museum and take a picture of a famous painting, you only own that picture of the painting, not the actual painting itself. By purchasing an NFT, you can legally display that image at galleries, events, museums, whatever it may be. Or the owner could rent out these rights to a third party or even more exciting, people have been hosting virtual galleries on Decentraland, which is a virtual reality world where you can buy virtual land and build on there. These are just a few examples of the possibilities. But coming back to my original point about NFT platforms, what these platforms do is allow their users to mint or add their pieces onto a blockchain. Blockchains are digital wallets that hold your cryptocurrency, tokens, or whatever other possessions you may have in the digital world. Some examples of blockchain include Coinbase, WalletLink, or the one that I use is MetaMask. Blockchains provide an untamperable token history that you can check at any moment. For example, here you can see I minted my first NFT Slinky Head on October 28th, 2020, and I priced it for 0.2 Ethereum. That same day, this person bought it and tried to resell it for 10 times the original price. However, after a few hours, you can see they took it down and it is now sitting in their wallet. All this data is permanently stored in blockchain, so anyone can see the full history of a piece and make sure it is the real deal. These transactions were made with Ethereum, or ETH. It is currently the second leading cryptocurrency right next to Bitcoin. The current conversion rate for ETH to US dollars is about 350 US dollars for one ETH. Granted, this is a rough estimate. If you plan on getting into NFTs but are worried about the stability of the currency, no worries. At any moment, you can transfer the balance into your bank account or you have the potential of holding your coins for if and when the value increases. Now that we've established those terms, let's get into digital scarcity. The goal of minting your art into NFTs is to garner the attention of investors. Or you could just be doing it for fun, it's all your choice. But if you are looking to appeal to investors, you need to make them want it. It has to be rare, thus rareable, super rare. So what you don't wanna do is immediately mint your entire portfolio. If just about anyone can get your pieces at any time, then the intrinsic value of that piece decreases. People want something exclusive. Which brings me to my next point. Speaking solely for Rarible because it's the only platform I have experience with, you can mint several editions of a piece. If you mint 500 editions of a piece, then it also probably wouldn't be so appealing to investors just because you've oversaturated that market with that one piece. Something that some artists do is burn or destroy unsold tokens so as to build up a reputation for giving buyers a limited time frame to buy their work. But it's not something I'm a fan of. I think personally, if you're gonna take the time to go mint a piece, it should be your best work, not just minting every piece you make. Also, burning NFTs has a cost, so why waste your coins? Now, why is crypto art 
appealing to investors in the first place. Well, unlike traditional art, they no longer need to deal with the middlemen and galleries taking a fat cut of those checks. Instead, these platforms do charge gas fees, but it's nothing compared to what galleries take. Additionally, with crypto, you don't need to worry about shipping, like shipping costs, damage during shipping, they don't have to pay for insurance, it's all there. You just need a screen that you can display it on. If there's a particular investor that believes in you as an artist, they might buy several of your pieces and hold on to them to resell as they track your growth. Of course, not everyone is here just to resell. Some people genuinely appreciate your work, which, you know, I would appreciate, but if someone's there just to flip your art, then don't even worry. With every piece you mint, you can set royalties. Going back to my slinky head example, I set my royalties at 10%, so if that buyer had successfully sold it for 2 ETH, then I would have gotten another 0.2 ETH from that sale. Okay, the last point I wanna touch on is unlockable content with your NFTs. When you go mint a token, you have the option to add content that becomes unlocked after someone buys the token. This is all pretty vague because you can choose what to unlock. Most examples that I found on Rarible are for high-res uh, downloadable files of the work, but since I've been making tees for a while now, I decided that I wanted to merge crypto and t-shirts. Here you can see I minted six editions of Split because I have six shirts available. If someone were to buy this NFT, they would afterwards get instructions on how to redeem their shirt, which I would ship shortly thereafter. But like I said, unlockable content can be whatever you want it to be, so it's really your choice on how to go about it. With that being said, I hope this cleared up your understanding of crypto art. And if you like this video, then make sure to let me know down below by clicking that button or maybe even subscribing. If there is anything that I missed, got wrong, or you just have additional questions, please feel free to leave your concerns down in the comments. I will try my best to address whatever. One last thing before I go, uh, I want to give a quick shout out to Emotional because he helped me get set up on Rarible and he was a tremendous help. So you should definitely go check him out, Twitter, Instagram, I don't know whatever other, his rareable, of course. But yeah, that's all I had left to say. So thank you for watching, have a good day, and go dive into the world of NFTs. Bye!